this is Jim Richards. We're talking about how to have heaven on earth. And like I've been saying every week, I know when you hear something like that, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pie in the sky. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm telling you something. Heaven on earth is a reality that you can enter into here in this life. And the great thing is the wisest teacher who ever walked the face of the earth, Jesus, taught us how to have heaven here on earth. Now, one of the great problems with even trying to bring a message this positive is this. Religion. Now, remember, there's a difference between religion and faith. Religion is man approaching God on his own terms. In other words, we have this logic, this rationale, this way of thinking that is based on um, thousands of years of history, thousands of years of carnality, and millions of lies that have been introduced into the human mindset, the human educational system, that, and they tell us how to live and how we can have the things that God promised really by doing it our way. So man has this inherent desire to know God, but man also has this inherent belief that he can't trust God because God is not a good God. So religion says, based on my opinions, based on my judgments of God, I have this way that I believe if I do it this way, I will get all of the benefits that God said that we can have. And I don't really have to deal with God and all of his commandments and all of his rules and all, all that kind of stuff. Faith, on the other hand, says because I know God's a good God and because I know I can trust him, I trust what he says. So I will approach God on his terms. So every time we approach God, we are either approaching God on our terms or we are approaching God on his terms. Now I want you to understand something. Every person has it in them. Every person. It doesn't matter who you are, how old you are. I mean, unless you have just given up, lost all hope, Every person has in him the inherent drive, desire, hunger for a better quality of life. Now, one of the things we know, research reveals this, human history reveals this, is that quality of life has little to do with what we have in the physical world. Even though it has, the, how, what we have in the physical world, what's going on around us, yes, that is important to our quality of life. But we have found that the seed of quality of life is what's going on inside us. It doesn't matter if you've got everything, if you've lost your soul. It doesn't matter if you're, mar you know, if you're married to a beautiful woman, but you've got a horrible marriage, uh, you're, not, you're not happy, you don't have a quality of life. If you've got piles of money in the bank and you're so afraid that you're going to lose it, that you're always finding some way to cheat the government and cheat people and, and, and protect it, you don't have a quality of life. I mean, if, if you've got all of the kids that you have always wanted, the big family, but you know, they're on drugs, they're running wild, they're going to prison, they're horrible, they're rebellious, they despise you. You don't have quality of life. And so we have tried to gain quality of life by really all of these things out here instead of dealing first with these things in here. Because the real truth is, when you got quality of life in here, it will permeate, it will, it will invade the world around you, and it will pr produce around you a world that mirrors the world that is going on inside you. Now, <clears throat> religion, which is... Like I say, it's thousands of years of deceit. Religion started in the Garden of Eden. And man decided he would seek the things that God offered his own way. And so man departed from God. He chose to have life on his own terms. And I can tell you this with, without any exception, ever pain, suffering, horror, heartbreak that's ever come into your life, anybody's life since man has been on the planet has been because man did things his way instead of God's way. Because all God really wants is a family that 
as whole as well that is capable of giving and receiving love and having this relationship. And uh, God really, you know, you can't have a relationship with dysfunctional people. You know, uh, if, if I were to sit in a room, if we were all sitting in a room together and I said, okay, how many of you have somebody in your family that's in financial trouble all the time? You know, nearly everybody would probably raise their hands. How many of you have at least one child, parent, you know, somebody in close proximity to you that is always complaining and unhappy? Uh, how many of you have uh, people around you that always want to get something from you and they think that you really should, should you know, be the one that provides their, their source of sustenance or their, or their source of happiness? How, or here would be another one. How many of you have a drug addict in your, in your close proximity you know, to your family? I'm telling you what, you, you would realize that nearly ev all of us have every one of those people that are affecting our lives. And so when we are attempting to have quality of life based on what's out here, we, then really we, we have no control over it. It's something that everybody else determines and that we never actually get to make the decisions about. Now, but Luciferianism, which is what was introduced at the garden, and is the very reason that Adam actually launched out against God was because Lucifer convinced Adam and Eve that God could not be trusted, that he really, that Adam and Eve really were not living life like God because, you know, they were, they were supposed, supposedly created in the likeness image of God, and they were. And so God couldn't be trusted. So the real truth is if they, if, if they want to get, free from God and really have a great life, they got to, they got to get rid of God and everything that God says. Don't trust anything that God says. That has been the whole journey of what we call the secular world. It's the basis for all governments of the world. It's the basis for all educational systems of the world. It's the basis for most science that's in the world. It is the basis for everything that is in the world system. Throw away everything about God, what God says works and let's do this our way. Now, the sad thing is, and, you know, we come to Jesus, we get saved, we start going to church, start trying to walk with God, and we still don't learn or trust God's ways. We still don't learn or trust this path or this realm that God has called us to, this way of living where it's easy, it's light, it's righteousness, peace, and joy. You know, it's all of the things that produce a true quality of life. So now, Luciferianism invaded and is the root of all religion. Remember, religion is man approaching God on his terms. So in Luciferianism, we have been taught that if you, that if you walk with God, it's going to be painful. It's going to be hard. This is what religion tells you. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to suffer. Da, 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 da. And I'm telling you, by the time they get through painting the picture of how bad it is to walk with God, the truth is nobody wants to make that journey. And so the world, because of what religion has taught them about God, is running away. And, and in fact, many good people will make you believe that if you're looking for anything good, uh, you're looking for any of the promises of God that you're corrupt and there's something wrong with you. I remember there's a guy that had, he has written some of the, some incredible worship songs. And uh, I, I'll never forget. We were, we were talking one, one day and, and, and he said, uh, he said, look, God never promised you anything. In other words, in other words, you get saved, you endure life and you go to heaven, but God never promised you anything in this life. I'm sitting there thinking, have you never read the pages of your Bible? There's thousands of promises that God made to hundreds of different people in the Bible. And, and the Word of God says that all of those promises are yes for us because we're in Jesus. So you say, well, why are you bringing this into a subject where, where we're talking about the, the kingdom of heaven? Well, remember, heaven is a realm where all of these resources abide. You know, our first type of heaven was the Garden of Eden. You know, it wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. There was all the food they needed. Uh, they didn't lack for anything. There was, there was just, there's no dissatisfaction. There was no need, uh, nothing. 
It, it was nothing but pleasure. God created man to live in pleasure. Now, trust me, I understand you can go the wrong way with pleasure if you pursue it apart from God. But the real truth is, man, and we talked about this a few weeks ago, in our hierarchy, uh, the hierarchy, the internal hierarchy of man, somewhere in that filtering system is our concept of pain and pleasure. And we will pursue pleasure even if we have to face pain. We don't mind facing pain if the pleasure is sure and if the pleasure is abundant enough or great enough. But we will not face pain if the pleasure is not sure and if the pleasure is not greater than the pain. But we are designed to avoid pain and pursue pleasure. Now, when Jesus came on the scene, by the time he got there, the gospel uh, of the good news, there was no good news about God. Everything was legalism. And let me tell you something. Nothing in the Old Testament is legalistic. The Jews twisted it to be legalistic. The religious community, particularly by the time of Jesus, was so legalistic, it stunk. It didn't even represent anything with God. Jesus rebuked them constantly for putting burdens on people that the people couldn't carry by making their load heavy and not using one finger to lighten their load. So Jesus was against this. And I'm going to tell you this, most of the places that Jesus or even Paul condemned the, the law, he was not condemning what God said uh, in the book of the law, he was condemning the law that had been the religious system that had been developed around the commandments and had been turned into a legalistic cesspool that destroyed people and alienated people from God. Uh, the, the teachers of Jesus' day and, and previous centuries had exalted the Talmud above the Torah. And in the Talmud, uh, you know, they, they, took, they took the laws of God and turned them into thousands or they took the commandments of God and turned them into thousands of laws. And all the condemnation that Jesus and Paul and give to <coughs> how approaching, approaching the law is, is not about the commandments. It's about the law. It's about the, the, the law of the Jews, not the commandments of God. Big difference. The law is how you apply the commandments. And we know by the teachings of Jesus that the commandments were supposed to be applied from the motive of love. And the end result of the commandments should be loving God, loving people, loving yourself. And in fact, the Apostle Paul told us, when you walk in love, you have fulfilled the commandments. It doesn't mean, the word fulfilled doesn't mean done away with. It means you have accomplished the goal. You have reached the original intention of those commandments. People who don't know the commandments, but know Jesus' teaching and apply them, they will, without knowing it, actually do what the commandments say to do, but they do it because they're driven by the, the motive of love. So when Jesus comes on the scene, he comes preaching the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And, uh, you know, I've talked to you a lot about the kingdom of God already, but I want to talk to you about the kingdom of heaven. This realm where all of our needs are met, all of our desires are fulfilled. There is absolutely no lack of any kind. Now, let me just put a little parentheses in here. That's the gospel that Impact Ministries is taking to the ends of the earth. That's the message that we are taking to raise up one billion disciples that will follow God. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus can't even come back until the gospel of the kingdom is preached around the world. Well, I'm telling you, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven aren't being preached around the world. Bits and pieces of it are, but not from the perspective that Jesus and the Word of God, you know, presented it. So I, I want to encourage you, man. If, if, if you want to help us reach a billion people, uh, go to my website and check out uh, Becoming a World Changer or Operation One Billion, and you can help us reach a billion people around the world, train leaders all over the world. And we're already actively doing this, starting Bible schools all over the world. So you, you can be a part of that and you can join us. And let me mention, by the way, if you're a world changer, or you want to become a world changer, uh, in July you can join us 
for World Changer Weekend. Third weekend in July every year. World Changer Weekend is where world changers get together. Man, we have the party of a lifetime. I always tell people it, it's so fun, you can't believe you can do it in church. I'm telling you, we have great music, we have great worship, we have great ministry of the Word, we have great fellowship, great things happen. And uh, if you want to be here, check it out. Go to impactministries.com, check it out, World Changer Weekend. All right, now back to what I'm talking about. So, the, the religious leaders did then what they've done now. They have made God look like a mean, hard task, legalistic taskmaster. And, and so because of that, uh, believers live under this same burden, this weight of, of trying to do good enough and and can't trust God because they think He's mean and can't have peace in their heart because they're always afraid they're not doing enough or they haven't lived up to some religious expectation. So Jesus comes on the scene preaching the good news about the kingdom of heaven. And what you discover, a couple of things that you discover, and I'm not giving them in priority, I'm just giving them in a logical way that makes sense. It's number one, Jesus' teaching about the heaven, or about, or about heaven, about the kingdom of heaven, is something, a realm that you can enter into, that you can participate in right now, which means you can have heaven on earth. You can have heaven right here on earth, regardless of what's going on around you. And that is the most phenomenal part. You know what? I love that I don't have to be controlled by what other people do. I love that when people around me get crazy, I don't have to get crazy anymore. You know, there's a time in my life when I did. I love that when pressure comes, I don't have to get under the pressure. I love that, that, that I can abide in a realm that has little or nothing to do with what's going on around me. Now, last week we talked about this pathway of, of righteousness. And, and in this pathway, there's life and no death. And, you know, I said the word way or the word path represents a realm or, a, or an approach to life. In Jesus' teaching, he took the commandments, and the word commandment is not even a good translation. The word commandment would be better translated as prescription. And if applied from God's intention according to the teachings of Jesus, it must be applied from the motive of love. It must be applied in a way that because you value people, you value God, and you even have healthy value for yourself, that the way you approach it, the way you believe it, the way you apply it, the way you teach it, uh, not only comes from a place of value, but contributes to the value that people will have for themselves. There's this realm this pathway, this life philosophy that Jesus taught, that he called the kingdom of heaven, and he's saying, in this realm, the good news is, in this realm, you can have heaven here on earth. In this realm, you can have what the Bible calls righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, I do want you to understand this is not an intellectual pursuit. This is not a humanitarian pursuit. This is the pursuit of righteousness. Because when we seek to walk in righteousness, we are seeking to walk as God would walk. And the number one way that defines whether or not we are walking as God would walk is whether or not we're walking in love. And when we walk in love, Everything else kind of pans out. When we walk in, I'm talking about God's definition of love. And we're relying on God to empower us, to strengthen us, to make us able to, you know, to live and function and abide in this realm. So, so we can walk through planet Earth, have the best life imaginable. Remember, Jesus said, here's why I came. I came so that you might have, one translation says, abundant life. One translation says that you might have life and have it to the fullest. That word life would be the, the quality of life possessed by the one who gives it. So I have come, Jesus said, that you might have the very best quality of life possible here on planet Earth. I have come that you might 
live, move, and have your being in heaven on earth. Now, and in this realm, and we talked about this last week, Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, the kingdom of God represents that surrender to Jesus as Lord and trusting His teaching, His representation of God, trusting who He is. And that part about the things being added unto you really applies more to the kingdom of heaven, where all of God's resources become yours in this realm. Now, let me mention this to you. Uh, Jesus didn't tell us to make converts. He told us to make disciples. And, and, and disciples are people who, who want to take what Jesus taught and they, they want to develop a lifestyle that looks like Jesus. They want to live from the motives that Jesus lived. They want to live the way Jesus lived. They want to minister the way that Jesus ministered. They want to be light and darkness like Jesus was. Disciples build their life on the teaching and the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our model and the death, burial, and resurrection empowers us and makes us able to do that. So we offer all of these broadcasts every single week. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, I can't tell you how many years people have said, Jim, you have too much free stuff on your website. People aren't going to buy what you're offering if, if, if they can get it all for free. I'm like, well, number one, number one goal of everything we do is to minister to people. Number two goal is, yes, we do have to create finances because we're doing outreach all over the world. But we discovered this one secret. Number one, we keep giving it away for free. And the people who are making the journey of being a disciple, when they purchase materials to support that journey, that they, number one, they are, we're fulfilling God's call for them to become disciples. But by purchasing the materials, they also finance us taking the gospel to other people all over the world, making disciples all over the world. Somebody might say, well, well Jim, it's in it wrong to sell the Word of God. Well, number one, we're not selling the Word of God. We're, you're getting this for free. Everybody's, everybody's getting this for free. But you know, in Jesus' day, if you wanted to be a disciple of somebody, you actually financially supported the person who was mentoring you. And so in this case, you're actually supporting us by investing in yourself. So listen, I've got a great book and an eight message uh, series called Heaven on Earth. And I'm telling you, this will walk you through the details. This will walk you through the things you want to apply if you're making this discipleship journey. I'm not saying you can't find these things by yourself. I'm just saying I'm going to take 50 years of making this journey and, and share it with you in a way that you don't have to spend 50 years trying to figure some of these things out. So if you're interested in it, go to impactministries.com. And I'll tell you what, tonight you can download the book and the series and you can be reading it, listening to it and, and making this journey. So be sure to get heaven on earth at impactministries.com. Now, let's, now let, let's, let's go back to this. So the legalist of Jesus' time who had taken what God told us as a way to love one another, as a way to treat each other, as a way to keep our civil government honest with his finances. I mean, everything that we needed for life at its best, God had already given. The one thing that we didn't have is until Jesus, we weren't born again. We didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God working in us, making us able to do these things. That's, that's the amazing thing. We not only have all the truth, we have the power of God in us to live and apply that truth and go beyond anything that we could ever do, even, you know, just personal choice and personal determination is not going to be enough to get you through facing some of the things that you're going to face in life. But I'm going to tell you something, the grace of God, the Spirit of God inside you will lead you, guide you, strengthen you, and make you able to put into practice everything that God's Word has ever said. But just um, why, why, is, why is Jesus' message so compelling? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because He is showing you how to enter in this, into this way of living that, like I said, we're all, not, not only are all of your needs met, but you, you have safety, you have provision, you have protection, you have direction from, you know, direction from the Lord. He becomes your shepherd. And because He's your shepherd, you're following Him and you're walking. And, and it says He always leads you in paths of righteousness. Oh, wait a minute. In the path of righteousness, there's life and there's no death. Now, we got some misunderstandings about what righteousness is, and we'll talk about that. 
And I do talk about that actually in my series. But righteousness is not the legalistic perfectionism that we have, that we have been taught in the past. Righteousness is where we are able to live as we should be able to live since Jesus is raised from the dead. Righteousness is being able to live as we should live with the peace of God in our heart. Man, can you just, and actually remember the peace, and you've heard me say this, if, if you've been with me for very long, you've heard me say this hundreds of times. The word peace, the peace that the world gives is a peace that is totally based on external circumstances. So the peace says, if you want to have, I mean, the world says, if you want to have peace, you've got to conquer your enemies. You've got to subdue them. You've got to break them down. Peace, the, the peace that the world says, if you want to, if, if you want to have peace about, uh, you know, about your financial well-being, then you've got to beat this guy out of the job. The world's peace says, in order for you to win, somebody else has to lose. And it's all about dominance, it's about control, it's about power, it's about force. But the peace of God is a peace that you have, it's this tranquility that you have because you know you're in a realm where you're protected, you're provided for, God is with you, He's your helper, He's your teacher, He's your father, and all of His resources are available to you in this realm. And so... Now, remember, he didn't just say, seek the resources of the kingdom of heaven. He didn't say, seek first the kingdom of heaven. He said, seek first the kingdom of God is righteousness. And then all of these resources are just added. You don't have to try to get them. You don't have to spend your faith on them. Listen, I'm talking about a walk with God that is easy and light. I am talking about a walk with God that will transform everything uh, about your world. You know, we have a special mentoring program that you can check into and you can only get into it at certain times, but you can go in and, and get your name on the list if, if there's not a program available. It's called Ultimate Impact where we mentor people and take them in, into a journey where, where we teach them to bring these things into their heart, develop their heart to be able to apply all of these kinds of principles. So go to impactministries.com, click on the Ultimate Impact icon on the homepage there. And you can read and see what it's all about. If you want to get your name on the list for the next mentoring program that we're going to launch, be sure and do that. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure and like this and subscribe to this channel. If you're not watching, go to YouTube and, and do this and write comments and questions. Do it. All of these things that you add make it where other people uh, are, are going to hear about this because YouTube will notify more people about what we're doing if more people make comments, if more people like it, if more people subscribe to it. And plus, if you subscribe to this, you will always get all of the up to the minute messages that are coming out. Also, and I know I mentioned a lot of things, but I got a couple extra seconds here. Uh, if you want to keep up with what's going on daily and you want my daily encouragements, be sure to go to our website, download the app. And every single day you'll get a short encouragement from me that I think will be that I think will be help something to help you make it through the day with more victory, more peace, more joy. Listen, I'm Jim Richards, and I'll be talking to you again next week.